Hi GP Learners, in this video I'm going to show you how you can start a meeting using Zoom. So I use this quite often with recording my podcasts or if I'm uh, starting a meeting as part of our primary care network and stuff. And I'm basically just going to show you how you can log on quickly and easily and a couple of quick tips as well. Let's take and hand your primary care and learning. Hi GP Learners. So I'm going to show you how to start a meeting using Zoom. This is a piece of software I use and I would highly recommend that you use in terms of managing web meetings, but also I use it for my podcasting and stuff. So if you're watching it for that reason, here you go. In terms of using it, it's dead easy to do. Um, you can obviously go to the website to have a look at Zoom in more detail. And it's giving you some information in terms of its plans and that kind of stuff. There is a free plan, dead easy to use. And in terms of ha the only time you really need to pay for meetings is if you're having more than three people on a regular basis because there is a time limit for three or more people and stuff. I do have the pay for plan, highly recommend it. Link down below if you want to use that to get it and stuff. But more often than not, you'll get sent a meeting invite that looks a little bit like this. So this is the, my version on WhatsApp. Could come to you via calendar or email or whatever. And effectively, it's a summary of the name of the meeting, the time, um, and effectively a link that lets you join the web meeting. It does give you other information down below that you can see. So this is how to dial into the meeting if you're just using your phone. And Zoom allows you to do that. So if you don't have decent bandwidth or if you don't have a smartphone or, or a computer to log into, you can dial in that method. But we're going to show you how to use the uh, web conferencing system. When you click on the link, first thing it'll do is ask you to download some software that allows you to use the meeting effectively. If it's the first time you're doing, you will have to download it. And I can even do this from an NHS computer. So it works really effectively. In our PCM meetings, we, everyone's been able to do this. However, I do have the software downloaded, so it's just going to ask me to open the Zoom meetings. If for some reason you can't, you can run it through the browser by clicking on the link there. But let's start the meeting. And when it does that, it'll open up a separate browser that basically lets you coordinate the meeting, as you can see here. First thing I'll ask you to do is to join with the computer audio. Now, I always recommend testing just to make sure you've got it right. So that's clicking on the link below. When you do this, it'll ask you to check your input and your output, so what you're speaking with and what you can hear. We're going to do that. It may go a little bit choppy, but let's check it out. So test the speaker. So hopefully you guys have heard that. That's because it's on my speaker. I'm going to change that to my headphones. Now I can hear that through my headphones. There we go. And I'm going to speak. And I could hear that for quite effectively and stuff. And as a result of that, you should be able to check the microphone dead easy. So you join computer audio. If you needed to, you can switch to a phone call, but I'm going to continue as we do there. And there we go. We're in the meeting. So hi, guys. Um, that's all you need to do to join. However, if you want some extra tips, keep watching. In terms of what I recommend people to do, is have a little look at the bottom of the corner of the screen. So you've got two little icons here. So you've got one that's a microphone, and as you can see, it's jumping up and down in green. And you've got another one, which is a camera, and that controls the input. Um, so if you wanted to, for example, switch off the camera, there we go. My camera's gone. Or if you want to change which camera input, so I've got two on my thing, you can do that dead easy and effectively. And now I'm back. Alternately, you may want to change the audio input. So as you saw in terms of testing, here's the various different inputs and outputs you can have if you want to change the speakers and that kind of stuff. Um, alternately, you can mute yourself. So if I click on the microphone, I have stopped talking. But you guys may not be able to hear me if you were actually on the meeting. However, as you can see, it does give you a little reminder if you've muted your microphone to say that you know, actually no one can hear you and just unmute it and stuff. You can use Control and A to do that as well if you prefer. The reason why that's really helpful and useful is if you have got lots of people on the meeting and um, it just reduces feedback if the people that aren't actively talking mute their microphone because it takes out the background noise. Additionally, one of the things I do recommend, as you've probably seen, is that you use headphones with the system again. It reduces the feedback when you're in a meeting, improves the audio quality, and it just basically means everyone's got a better experience. So I highly recommend if you're using an online software like this, use my head, use headphones and stuff. Other functions that this allows you to do, so you can invite more people to the meeting if you need to, click on that, and it brings up a different methods that you can do that, either by contacts or email, or you can send them the link, which is the easiest way I find. You can manage meeting participants, so effectively, at the moment, it's just me, but if there were other people, you can see who else is on there. And as the host, you get a little bit more control. So, for example, I could mute people. Mm, power. Um, other kind of things that you can do. So, I'm just going to close that down. Additionally, and one of the really useful things about Zoom is that you can share your screen. 
So if I click on the screen share, it gives you various different options that you may want to do. So I can share my whole screen, I can share a whiteboard, allows you to type and do things on the screen and stuff, or a separate iPad if that's connected via Bluetooth and things, or individual tabs of your browser. Um, so for example, if I was to click on the tab browser there, I'm now sharing my browser with the people in the meeting and stuff. For you guys, it's going to look exactly the same. Um, and then if you want to stop share, you just click at the top of the screen and there we go. And anybody in the meeting can do this. So that's really effective if you've got lots of people around and you just want to share what you're doing. Um, additionally, you can chat to people. So if I click on that, it opens up a chat on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And as a result of that, I can then send messages to either everybody in the room or if there was more than one, um, you can select individual people. And that's really useful, for example, if you're trying to coordinate things during a meeting, but you don't want to actually interrupt the meeting itself find it really useful and effective. Um, and that chat is downloaded separately when you click record, which is the final thing and really useful thing with Zoom. So you can record the meeting. When you click on that, it gives you the option to record on the cloud system, so their servers, or on the actual computer that you're using. Benefit of doing it on the cloud is it's completely um, stored and backed up and stuff. However, there is a limit depending on which plan you've got. Or, as I said, you can record on the computer you're using. Main issue with that is making sure you've got enough storage. So, for example, an hour-long meeting is typically about a gig of data and stuff that you will need on average. Um, so important to remember and really useful. And myself and Andy cover doing that a lot more effectively in our follow-up video to this, which goes through how to use Zoom in a hell of a lot more detail. If you want to look at this system, highly recommend you guys have a look at that. This is just a quick little intro video to show you how to get onto the system and to use it, and a couple of my quick tips, as I said. If you want more information, I've got a little checklist that you guys can download. In addition, if you do want to sign up, use the link below. You won't regret it. I've been using Zoom for the past few months now. It's streamlined our PCN working, and as well as my podcasting working, so much so that I couldn't do without it at this point. So I highly recommend it. Free account's pretty decent. Paid account, even better, particularly online storage and the ability to have multiple people in meetings for much longer. As always, guys, if you've got any questions, more than happy to try and answer them as best as I can. Available on all the social media platforms, so Twitter, at Dr. Gandalf 52 on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere, basically. LinkedIn, don't forget there. And as always, always appreciate a review. If you guys would be happy to leave me one, I would love that. Really enjoy your comments and stuff and seeing those. Any more, I'm always happy to help. And as always, I'm here to try and save you and your patient's time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.